floor plan can tell you so much about a space that you occupy. Now, the industry standard is that you will draw your floor plan in softwares and programs like AutoCAD or Revit. But today I wanted to show you how to draw a floor plan just using a pen and paper. So without further ado, this is how you manually draw a floor plan. This video is tailored toward beginners. So I will not be using something called an architectural scale. I'm really going for ballpark dimensions here. You can use a tape measure or a laser measure too if you wanna be more accurate. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Really, we're just trying to get a good base down and just get you drawing your first floor plan. Naturally, if I was doing this for a formal project, I would pay stricter attention to the details. But today, all you need is super simple. You just need paper, pens, or pencils, an eraser, and a laser measuring tool. A good hack though is also using graph paper and each square could be a set dimension determined by you, the drafter. Now, please let me know if you guys want a more formal approach to hand drawing a floor plan. But like I said, this is for total beginners. Welcome. So there's really only six steps to drawing a floor plan. Step number one, start from the outside and work your way in. You you want to generate a rough outline of your building and really think of this as the shell of your building. Now, let's say you have multiple floors that you are drawing. Use a new fresh sheet for every single floor and you are going to copy this shell outline on every single sheet and completely optional, but you can pencil in some reference lines and grid points just to make sure that all of your sheets are consistent. And I'm just gonna sketch it. Now you can use a ruler and I recommend it. <laughs> doesn't have to be perfect. Step number two, add your exterior windows and doors. Before placing all of your interior walls and stuff, it's actually a really good idea just to sketch where your windows and doors will be. I do share this wall with my neighbor. There's gonna be no exterior doors. And it's okay if it's messy and a little bit sloppy. We're actually going to redraw this later. To draw windows and doors, you could do just a simple additional line just for now just to get a good idea of what everything's looking like and don't stress if it's not perfect we're all beginners here and we're all learning together it's okay if it's sloppy it's going to take a couple iterations just to make sure everything looks good this is why we love erasers now my door opens inward which is annoying i actually drew this wrong there's another jet out And then no windows over here. So that's pretty much the general gist of it. Step three, now you can draw your interior walls and doors. You really just want to get a good idea of the placement for your interior spaces. And later on, go back and add your interior doors. And once again, we are going to go back and completely redraw everything, especially once we are adding our final dimensions. But more on that later. Now we start adding doors. And now what we're gonna do is start adding these jut outs and I'm just gonna fill it with poche because I know on the inside of this, it's just a flat wall. I also have a jut out here, just the column structure that they use for support. That's the basics. So we're gonna take a fresh sheet and redraw this. Step number four, we are going to start measuring everything, measuring everything. And I am going to be using a laser measure. Now, if you don't know what a laser measure is, I made a whole video on how to use a laser measure and you can watch it up here. Just know that the most important thing about using a laser measure to make sure you're getting accurate measurements is that it is parallel and level to the floor. This is why I recommend buying a laser measurement tool that has little level icons 
on it. Now, how many measurements do you need? In my experience, the more measurements you have, the better. Measuring these little jut outs here in my space is super important for me. So now that I have this base floor plan, I'm actually going to go around my apartment and measure everything using your handy dandy laser measure is a perfect way to ensure that your proportions are correct. And if they're incorrect, it's an easy fix. And this is why floor plans take time. It's super iterative. And especially since we are beginners and hand drawing everything, you're probably gonna be drawing the same floor plan at least two, three, four times even until you get that super refined final product. Let's get to measuring things and you'll see my apartment. Now, I'm not gonna show you my bedroom cause that's personal and private. I wrote down all of the dimensions. At the end of the day, your paper should be filled with dimensions. I just started getting the basic dimensions, but really you get the idea and let's just get back into the tutorial. Just a quick side note, if you have a bunch of stuff on the floor and can't take a good floor dimension, you can always take it up higher closer to the ceiling, the more you know. Step number five is adding these detailed components. Roughly sketch the location of the permanent things in your location, in your building, whatever you're drawing. So for instance, I'm gonna draw where the toilet is and the sink and my stove and the sink in the kitchen. Those are detailed components that I'm going to draw. Now you can draw movable furniture like this couch here, completely up to you as the designer and draftsman. So here you can see I am just going to quickly redraw the floor plan. I busted out the ruler for this and I'm still using a pencil just to start. Make sure that your proportions are right. This is what I mean by it might take another additional iteration just to make sure those proportions are right. I also started adding some poche. Now poche is just the infill of the wall. Of course there's insulation and stuff like that in here, but we're just gonna stick to a simple black poche just to make it more readable. And the last step, step number six, is to label everything. Labels are ideal to help people read your floor plan. So my recommendation is start big and end small. So label the room. So this would be my living room space. And next you would label the bedroom or the kitchen or the bathroom one and start big and then work your way smaller. So start labeling the dimensions of the living room. Also, if you used a scale ruler, an architectural ruler, you would want to include your scale and reference at the bottom. And you can add other important notes about the space with just little text. And lastly, it is a good idea to include a north arrow and just use the iPhone compass app and determine what direction your building is facing. And that's all relative to how you drew the floor plan. Now there will be certain discrepancies and this is why I encourage you to keep redrawing the exact same plan over and over again. For instance, this distance shouldn't be this wide. My bathroom should be a little bit taller. So if I were to redraw this again, I would make those edits. And because we aren't using graphing paper and just like normal paper, it's fine. This is why this was geared more towards the beginning if you want a more advanced tutorial about drawing floor plans, please let me know. This is a really great first second pass at drawing your floor plan. And if we were still drawing together, I would just transfer all of these dimensions to this plan, but I'm running late for work and I have to wrap this tutorial up. All right, well, I hope that this video was helpful and this is a great exercise to do, especially if you are interested in studying architecture. This is not a substitute for professional advice. I am just a architecture student myself. That's it for today's video and I hope to see you guys next time. Love you guys.